I want to start my story by clearly stating that I am married to an ex-go-go girl from Pattaya, and I have zero regrets. So yes, the woman I married used to work in a bar and would entertain customers. Every negative thing people have said about that, I've heard it all before, ten times over. When I listen to a lot of the stories on this channel, and then read the comments, I get pretty annoyed at the people who have clearly been ripped off by a Thai girl, and then thinks that all Thai girls are the same. You have to remember, a lot of these stories that end in heartbreak and money being lost are from older men that fell in love for the first Thai girl they laid eyes on, which is normally a young bar girl. People actually believe that these girls that are 20 years younger than them are actually interested in them and want to be in a genuine relationship. The guys that normally fall for this are newbies to the country or people that have not had much luck with the ladies during their life. That being said, even veterans and people with their heads screwed on the most can also fall for the bar girl spell. Every country has good and bad people. Being judgmental towards a Thai woman just because of what they do for a living really grinds my gears. Just to make it clear, I am talking about girls that work in bars, clubs and the nightlife in general. Of course, it is not the ideal job you would want a girl working in, but still, we should not judge them for doing it. We all have our own story after all, and we don't know everybody's story. If you are just going to Thailand for a holiday and a bit of fun, then that's fine, go and do that. But if you do find yourself catching feelings for one of these ladies, don't think it's the end of the world just because somebody said so in a comment. Now I am not saying do not be cautious, especially dealing with girls that work in a bar in Pattaya. There are a million red flags already before you even meet a bar girl, and the reasons to not be in a relationship with one probably outweighs the reasons to be in a relationship with one. But just because a 57 year old found out his 20 year old girlfriend already has a boyfriend, does not mean it is going to happen to you. Common sense goes a long way in Pattaya. You can pretty much see when something is just transactional fun and when there is actually feelings involved. I think we all have enough brains to realise when a girl really likes us and when she's just playing a game. Having said that, if that was true, then there wouldn't be so many stories with bad outcomes. But in my opinion, you can easily spot the girl that is constantly lying and talking about money to the girl that wants to actually spend time with you away from that life. People that badmouth these bar girls in Pattaya just don't realise how hard it is to live in a village on 150 baht a day. Okay, neither do I I guess, but I do spend at least one month out of the year there so I think I do have a bit more experience than some. Although my wife's village that we visit is not located in the Isan region, it is very close and the wages for working in the fields here are probably the same as they are in Isan and no doubt similar to other villages in Thailand. Not to mention how hard they have to work for that kind of little salary. We all know 150 baht a day is not a lot of money at all. At the time of me writing this story, it is around 4 US dollars. I can't even begin to imagine any of the viewers living on 150 baht a day. It has been a long time since I have been into a go-go bar, but I should imagine that 150 won't even get you a drink in a go-go bar nowadays. In fact, I bet the go-go girls make that in commission just from one drink. 
So this leads me on to the next part. Why shouldn't these village girls want to earn more money than just the peanuts they get paid? They are barely surviving in the villages and with very little money they can't exactly treat themselves to anything other than food for surviving. Why shouldn't these girls want to earn more than just enough to feed themselves and their families, including their children, which is normally the case? Most of the bar girls you will meet will be single mothers, relying on their family to take care of their kids while she is out working. Though, some of them do have Thai boyfriends or husbands, but don't expect them to be honest about that. The boyfriend, like her family, will also have his hand out for the money that she makes from the bar. Now, let me talk a little about my wife and how we met. As I said, I met her while she was a go-go girl in a club in Pattaya a pretty popular one at the time. I was a typical monger at the time and it was during my fourth or fifth patio trip that I met her. At the time, I had my own set of rules where I would only bar find a girl for one night and then I would not go back to the bar again. I would go to a different bar and meet a different girl. I did this because at the time, I did not want to catch feelings for anyone. I wanted a hassle-free trip and not to go home with any baggage. It was kind of like the three-day rule that many people know about. Only mine was a one-day rule. I would have classed myself as a so-called Pattaya veteran, so this just shows that anyone can fall for these ladies, even if you have your own set of rules. Obviously, I did not stick to my rules because I ended up getting married. Anyway, there I was heading into a go-go bar with a girl next to me that I had met and bar find earlier. I always take the bar find girl for a couple of drinks outside of her bar just to see how she is with me and if it's worth taking things any further than the bar. When we walked in, my future wife took me and my bar fine to a table and asked if we wanted a drink. I was pretty drunk at the time and asked her rudely if she would like to come back with us. I was the typical stupid tourist. She brushed me off and went to focus on other customers. I instantly regretted it and knew I shouldn't have asked that. To this day, my wife has never let me forget the first words I said to her and occasionally brings it up, all in good humour. I knew as soon as I said it and the way she reacted that I had been extremely rude and for some reason it stuck with me all night. Even the next day, after spending the night with my bar fine, I could not get it out of my head what I had said. To my future wife. So that night I decided that I should go and apologize and see if I could buy her a drink. As soon as I walked in she spotted me and came over to me asking me if I wanted a drink. I was surprised that she was being so friendly after the embarrassing things I had said to her the previous night. I did not notice it the night before maybe because I was a bit drunk, but she had a lovely pair staring straight at me. After composing myself, I ordered a chang for myself and she took me to a table. Bringing the drink to me, I apologised for what I had said the night before and asked if she would like to join me for a drink to which she accepted. She sat down with me and I proceeded to tell her that it was out of character for me to say what I said last night. She replied that it's fine, and she has heard much worse and even crazier requests, which is understandable in that city. We got along great and had laughs together. I think because I was stone cold sober, she could see I'm not the normal drunken fool that she met 
the previous night. And a couple of drinks later, I bar find her. We spent the rest of my trip together. All of a sudden, going out alone to the lady bars just did not interest me. Something had changed. And if I'm honest, I kind of liked the feeling. Normally, I would be waking up saying bye to the girl from the previous night and then planning on which bars I would be going to that night. But now, I would be waking up saying bye to this girl and looking forward to seeing her again the same night. I bar find her every night for the rest of my holiday and we spent every day together. We would go out together in the day, go eat, do whatever, and then head to her bar at night, have a few drinks, and then I would pay the bar fine. I could feel that this wasn't work for her, and she enjoyed being with me. It's hard to explain, but you will just know when this happens. Like I said earlier, you can tell when it's just work with these women, and when it's actual feelings, you just know it. I remember even deleting the lineup from my phone that was full of bar girl numbers, just because I was happy with this one. She did not directly ask me to delete them, but she made passing jokes about my phone being filled with bar girls. I think she may have been a little jealous and still thought I was playing around, but she never said it directly to me. She realised pretty quick that I was being serious about me and her. I even deleted the numbers of my favourite girls that I had a really good time with and saw on many different occasions. Spending time with her was not just all bedroom time and drinking at the bars. I actually got to know her quite a bit. My wife previously lived in her village working to support her then Thai husband and her child. Her child was not even one years old when her husband decided to leave. Once her husband walked out on her and her child for another woman he had found, she decided she needed a change. She knew she needed to make money for her and her child as she was getting no help from her ex-husband or family. Originally, she did not want to do any bar work, so she headed to Phuket first, where she worked as a masseuse doing proper Thai massages, not the types of massages that tourists are familiar with. She was good at her job and worked really hard, but soon realised that the money is still not great and people coming into the shop were looking for more than just a massage. During this time, she had to go back to her village to take care of her son for a couple of months, and then her plan was to return to Phuket. Instead, she realised that she did not like Phuket and did not want to go back. She thought she could make it work in her village. However, with not making enough money and having to ask her parents to borrow money from them, she had been persuaded by her friend to go to Pattaya. According to my wife, Pattaya, or working as a bar girl, dancer, or any entertainment work, never even crossed her mind. Her friend had been a bar girl in Pattaya for about a year, and looked to be a successful bar girl at that. She had a lot of sponsors, sending a lot of money home each month, nice clothes, always posting pictures of her night out, and she was very enhanced. I think my wife, seeing the way her friend lived, she fancied a bit of that lifestyle, so she made the move. Like most girls in Pattaya, my wife left her son with her parents and promised to send money back every week to take care of them. My wife was, and still is, a stunner with a perfect figure, in my eyes anyway, so you can imagine how much money she made in Pattaya compared 
to in her village. She got a job in the same go-go bar as her friend and she claimed that from day one she was making money from customs. Although she did not like the job at first, she said she had to learn to switch off and just think about the money she would be making. And about six months after working in Pattaya, she met me, lucky lass. After our first meeting, we kept in touch when I went back to the UK. Even at this point, when I was back in the UK, I did not really expect it to go any further than online friends. Actually, this is the first time I had kept in touch with a bar girl after returning home. Normally, as soon as I get on the plane, that's it until next time. No need to keep in touch with anyone. And if you're going to Pattaya for a bit of fun, I suggest you do the same. Anyway, as the days went on and we got to know each other more, I started to see a future with her. We arranged that I would come back and see her for two weeks, spend more time with each other and get to know each other even better. On my second trip, we spent the whole two weeks together. Yes, I bar find her for the whole two weeks. This was not a scam. Before I got there, I knew that I would have to bar find her from the bar if we wanted to spend time together. She would actually be losing money by allowing me to bar find her because it meant that she wouldn't be working. At the end of that trip, we mutually agreed to be in a relationship. It wasn't the easiest thing because I knew what she would have to be doing while I was back home in the UK. I think this is the hardest part that any guy will have to deal with if they have committed to being in a relationship with a bar girl. Let's be honest, no matter how much you love someone, none of us want them to be working at a bar in Thailand. We all know what goes on in them bars and what the girls are there for. At this time, I did not have enough money to support her and she knew that she understood, but made it very clear that she would still have to be working. She tried to put me at ease by messaging me or calling me every time she finished work. And although I did not like hearing it, she would be honest and tell me if she is busy after work, to which I had to accept. I just kept telling myself that this is how it's going to have to be for now but it won't always be like this. Now, it's my third trip. I had been working like crazy and saving every penny I could. On this trip, we actually left Pattaya and had a holiday in Koh Samui for two weeks. It was great getting away from Pattaya, as that's all I knew about Thailand. Koh Samui was nothing like Pattaya. There wasn't bars and girls everywhere you looked, though you could find it if you really wanted it. It was more of a chill place, somewhere where you would take your girlfriend or wife. This trip was really fun and we got along so good. The chemistry was there and I think on this trip we both knew that we loved each other. At the end of the third trip, we had a talk and I was now at a stage where I could support her if she stopped working at the bar. This is another thing that guys need to understand when being in a relationship with a bar girl. As I mentioned, none of us want our girlfriends working in a bar, so the next step is to support them by sending them money so they do not need to work at the bar any longer. I would say that this is where most of the relationships fail because nobody wants to send money to someone and those that do send the money is when you may realize it's all just one big scam. A lot of the times when a girl is in it just for the money, she will accept the payment from a sponsor to leave the bar, but she won't actually leave or maybe she will just work less. 
if you do catch them working at the bar after you've been sending money for them not to, they will come up with all the excuses under the sun. I have come to see my friends at the bar, I'm just here but not working, I only drink with customers, nothing else. The list goes on. In my eyes, if you've paid for them to leave the bar, then that's exactly what they should do. If they don't, I would walk away and not listen to any excuses. So, we agreed that I would send her 20,000 baht a month for her and 5,000 for her to send home. It wasn't a huge amount and she sure could be earning more at the bar, but she wanted to make it work with me so she was okay with that amount. I know that she left the bar because the fact that I would only be sending 20,000 a month, I told her that if it's not enough, she can work at the bar for two days a week. She replied that 20,000 is enough and she doesn't need to or want to work at the bar anymore. So I trusted her that she didn't. It wasn't long after the third trip that she came to the UK on a visitor's visa. She loved it here. She instantly fell in love with the UK and told me she would like to start a life here with me one day. To cut this part of the story short, we got married in the UK, went through all the visa process and paperwork. Now we are still happily married and living here. As far as working in a go-go bar, my wife says she has no regrets. She claims that although she would be judged a lot by foreigners, money and living a good life was more important than the opinions of Westerners. Working in Pattaya, she was able to save up money and now working in the UK and having help from me, she is now the proud owner of a house in Thailand that her parents still live in, a car in the UK and a bunch of savings in Thailand. She also buys land in Thailand for when we move back there and knows that as more land becomes available, we will be buying more. Yes, before you all start, I know the land is in her name and not mine. That is a risk I'm willing to take. She also owns a shop in Thailand that some of her family members run and we have plans on extending that and working on it more once we finally decide to head back to Thailand for good. Her son eventually joined us in the UK once we got all the paperwork sorted. And later, we introduced a new baby boy to the world. This was a scary moment for us, because our son wasn't planned, but he was such a blessing and I couldn't have been happier. Her first son is being educated in the UK and now has more prospects in life. Education in Thailand, let's just say, it's not the best, and rarely do they go on to higher education. So I'm glad our kids will be educated here. All in all, life is pretty good, and I'm very glad I walked into that go-go bar that night, even if I did say the wrong things. It's a weird thing to say, especially when people ask how we met, but I'm not ashamed and neither is she. That's why I'm sharing my story. Ignore when people look down their nose at you. As long as you are happy, that is all that matters. In life, it's normally the man that is jealous of the woman, but to this day, she is still so paranoid that I will go off with another Thai woman. That is something you have to come to terms with. Thai women can get very jealous even over the smallest things. We visit Pattaya often as that is where we met and that is where all her friends are. And when we are there, I'm not allowed out unless I have a mutual friend with me. I don't think it's me that she does not trust. It's the other girls that would be around me that she does not trust. She knows there is too much risk in Pattaya to let me go out alone even though I have no intentions of going with another woman. 
She knows the game so well, so she knows all the types of tricks that these ladies will pull around me. However, my pate of playboy days ended the day I met my wife. Truth be told, I used to be one of them guys also that would laugh at the stories of other guys falling in love with bar girls in Pattaya. I can remember thinking, how can people be so dull to think that these girls actually like them and could possibly see a future with them? It wasn't until I went there and experienced it firsthand when I met my wife. It really is so easy to catch feelings and fall for someone there. Just writing out my story, it feels surreal and crazy. I was a happy-go-lucky guy living life day by day. Falling in love, even having a relationship, was the last thing on my mind. Patea was my secret getaway from my friends and family back home. I would go there and have as much fun as I can never catching feelings for any of the girls I meet, and then head back to the UK as if I've never been anywhere. I would tell my family and friends that while in Thailand, I just went visiting temples, exploring, seeing the beaches, and trying all different types of Thai food. Little did they know, I did none of them things. Or maybe they did know what I was getting up to, they just didn't tell me. It's true what they say, you never know when love is going to strike. It's not the most romantic story out there about two people meeting, but it's certainly different, and one that we both still have a laugh at to this day. I believe that my wife is my soulmate, and we were meant to meet that night. I know that a lot of the comments will be from you skeptics saying that she will take as much money from me as possible and leave me. That is mainly because the stories that are shared always end badly, but they don't share the circumstances such as the age gap or financial issues. Age normally plays a huge factor in all of these heartbreak stories. Very rarely will you hear that they are within the same age or the woman being older. Me and my wife are only a couple of years apart and she makes her fair share of money, as do I. Not every bar girl is out to ruin your life. Some of them are just looking for a better life, and while looking for that life, they are trying to make as much money as possible. I do trust my wife more than life itself, but I'm not stupid. I won't leave all my money and investments in Thailand, just in case. But I truly believe that I have nothing to worry about. I don't doubt my wife for one second. I think we will be together for the remainder of our days. Did she see me as a cash cow when we first met? And just a foreigner that she could try and rinse? Maybe. I guess I'll never know. But she eventually got feelings for me. And we are completely in love with each other. But... If I am completely wrong about everything and I lose it all, I will make sure to submit another story so you can all have a laugh at me. I always have to giggle to myself when we visit her family in the village in Thailand. Me and my wife will drive around and she will point out the nice brick houses, not the hut type houses, and say that she knows the woman that lives there. She met a foreigner in the past, got married, built the house and got a divorce. Now she lives in the house with her Thai husband. I know in my story I am trying to show off the positives of being in a relationship with one of these girls and the outcome can be good. But I don't want to lie and act like bad things do not happen. So don't get me wrong. I know there are bad people out there and thousands of foreigners have lost everything to the wrong Thai girl. But there are success stories like mine also. The decision goes back to using common sense that God gifted us all with, some more than others. I know a few people here in the UK that have married a Thai woman and brought their wife here. They have been happily married for years, both working, 
They aren't freeloaders that expect their husband to make all the money for them. Their wives own nothing. They have to work for their money and everything they get, they earn. It is a big misconception that all Thais want to marry a foreigner to get out of Thailand and have a better life. The part about having a better life is true. But moving out of Thailand couldn't be further from the truth. Most Thais I know of do not want to leave their country. They have families there and just want a good life. So the Thai women that do move out of Thailand, they simply get married because they love each other and not for some type of scam. I will end my story on another high note. When the wife was working in Phuket, she told me that she had a friend in the massage parlour that claimed she was a fortune teller and could see things that normal people can't see. I am very sceptical about these type of people, as is my wife. She told my wife that she will get married three times, live a good life, have plenty of money and move out of Thailand. Most of it came true, but let's just hope she got the three husband part wrong because I'm husband number two. So, there is obviously a big risk when it comes to taking things further with a bar girl. The main concern is does she actually have feelings for you or is it simply just work for her? You should probably already know this by the way she acts around you. It's not rocket science to know if there is chemistry or not. So guys, if you have the gut feeling that it could work, take the risk or you may have to live with regret. If you do take the risk and you realise your money is running out fast because of her, that's a clear indication that it probably isn't going to work in the future. Especially if you are just giving her money simply because she asked for it and not for something that will benefit you both in the future. Cheers for listening and all the best.